Welcome to Toy Polloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now if you've watched some of my recent videos you'll see that I was donated a box of Action Man bits which included two figures and the Seawolf for me to restore. So today we're going to take a look at one of the figures that was inside that box and that is the Drunken Sailor as you can see here. Now he's in a pretty sorry state. He's really quite battered, he's missing his hands. He did come with a bottle of rum though which I think is the only way that he's managed to survive so long uh, in this sort of condition. So first up we're going to take off his clothes and see what what sort of uh, things we need to fix on the body and also what sort of things we need to fix on the clothes and then we'll see how we can go about doing that. Now that he's uh, out of his clothes we get a much better idea of what needs to be done. The clothes themselves are in a pretty sorry state. Actually the only two bits of the uniform that are correct are the shirt and the little life vest there. Everything else is, needs to be found. These are the wrong trousers, this is the wrong hat. Uh, so I think those can uh, be fixed and I will source uh, the missing parts. The Probably the worst bit is actually the shirt here which is some um, yeah, we can see it's been torn and someone's tried to repair it a few times. Lots of the stitching is undone. It's missing quite a few of the poppers on the, the sort of front part there. It's in quite a sorry state. I reckon I can probably improve that. It may be that I need to find a, uh, another one as this is in really quite rough condition, but I should, I'm sure I can improve it a lot. Uh, so and then we need to find trousers and other bits of his uniform. Now the figure this is in a sorry state. As you can see here, someone's used him as a bit of a pin cushion. They've obviously pushed pins into his chest and the groin uh, quite a few times. Actually, it looks quite painful. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's pretty pretty bad damage there. Uh, obviously his head, that's actually not too bad condition. It's missing a little bit of flocking on the underside of his beard and on the side there, but really that's not too bad a face. Uh, we can certainly clean that up and uh, make that look a lot better. Then of course he's missing his hands. Well, that one is there, but his, uh, the plastic, uh, the sort of rubber has gone absolutely rock solid so we're going to need to replace that hand. Uh, this hand is missing and then if we go down to his feet you can see he has odd feet. This is an original foot. Uh, this one here looks like it's from another sort of uh, action figure line called Tommy Gun which was released at the same time. It's the right sort of colour so I think that is just a foot off a different toy line uh, so we can certainly replace that. I think the first thing we need to do is actually just take this guy apart because again He's pretty loose, the elastic's gone uh, inside him, which is often a problem in these figures. Uh, so I'm going to strip this one down into his bare parts. I'm not going to show you how I do this. If you want to see that, then check out my Deep Sea Diver restoration figure, where I show you the full process of uh, taking a figure apart. But once we've got him apart, I can then give him a good clean and we'll try and start putting him back together and fixing some of these issues. Uh, certainly the hands will fix. I don't think I'm going to do anything about these pinholes in his body. That's just battle damage. And by the time he's got his shirt on, you're not going to see that. But we'll certainly replace his foot and get his hands done and even sort out the flocking on his face. So let's get him apart and we'll start the cleaning process. Now he's stripped down into his bare sort of parts. I'm going to give this a wash in some hot soapy water and hopefully remove a lot of these little bits of dirt. As you can see here there's I'm not quite sure what that is on the arm. There's a similar sort of stuff on the back here so I'm going to try and clean all of that off and what I can't clean off uh, with hot water I will do with some lighter fluid. I'm also going to give uh, the bits of clothing a wash in just some uh, sort of hand washing uh, liquid as well just so that these are as clean as can be before we start doing all of the repairs. The cleaning of all these bits went pretty well. The Action Man figure itself is now pretty nice and clean. I had to use lighter fluid on a few areas, especially where the rust had sort of rubbed on the uh, hip joints and shoulder joints to remove it. Um, and so what the last thing I needed to do on that Action Man body is to remove some of the ink marks that were on his face. Uh, if you haven't seen me do this before, then the uh, trick is to use some Oxy Spot Cream. Uh, you can check out my other videos on ink removal or check out my uh, Deep Sea Diver Action Man restoration that I've just filmed where I cover uh, the uh, ink removal process in, uh, in greater detail. So while that we're waiting for that to work we can get on with trying to fix the costume. Now 
I only have uh, the uh, top part of the costume. I've actually traded uh, with another collector for the trousers, which are in really nice condition, but this top is in pretty terrible condition. So uh, what I'm going to do is to unstitch the bits that have been sort of part uh, repaired by someone in the past. As you can see here, there's some old bits of thread. And I've uh, borrowed some of Mrs. Toy Ploy's sewing uh, goods and gizmos. And as you can see here, I have a thing for unpicking that. And once I've unpicked that, then I'm going to re-sew all of these seams and try and get them to look as nice as possible. You can see that the pocket is uh, loose as well, so I've got to sew that back on. And one of the little poppers, or actually a couple of the little uh, poppers are missing on here. Uh, you can easily buy these. They're called press studs. Uh, they come in packs of, well, you know, 20 or 30. And these are seven millimeter ones, so you get a front and a back. So I actually only need to uh, replace a couple of those, I think. So I've got a few of these already from a previous restoration. So uh, basically it's sewing. It's um, something that you can either do or you can't do. It's pretty straightforward, really. and uh, just takes a lot of time, especially on something so small. So I'm just going to carefully go around and unpick all of this. Uh, and we try and get this looking quite nice. And here we have my finished uh, bit of sewing. As you can see, it's starting to look all right. It's all come back together. Now the stitching under the arm has sort of filled that uh, rip that was there and the unstitching, that doesn't look too bad. It's got all the poppers on, the pocket is back on. And wouldn't you know, I went to a toy fair today and I've actually managed to pick up another one. So uh, although I've finished doing this and finished doing all the sewing, the one that I picked up is actually in far better condition and it has all of the buttons that was missing off here as well. So uh, it's nice to try and restore things using what I was given, uh, but actually this one is so much better. I think I'm going to work with this one from now on. I've already just done a little bit of sewing because one of the buttons had come off and part of the arm and uh, seam had sort of come undone. So I've just uh, tidied that up. But I think that is actually much better. And this only cost me £2. So normally I don't like just replacing things and try to fix them. But in this instance, I'm going to swap that out uh, with this much nicer sailor's top. And while we're looking at the clothes for this sailor, not only have I got the top, I have done a trade with a very kind subscriber, Joe Haynes. So uh, I did a trade with him for some Star Wars stuff and I got the uh, sailor's trousers. So that's good because those are one thing that I did need. And I was doing a little bit of eBay searching. Now, this was the life jacket that came with the uh, drunken sailor that I was to restore. I've given this a good wash, but as you can see, it's pretty marked. It's got some holes in it. It's actually really faded. And I was looking at dyeing it. And then while I was browsing on eBay and buying some other bits, I managed to pick this up, which is an almost brand new looking one and it cost me a pound so again I do prefer to restore things that you probably could die although it's a little bit awkward because it's got white uh, straps on it that you'd have to unsew uh, but I was lucky enough to get this one which is in really nice condition for a pound so again not my normal sort of restoration I would like to restore things but for a pound you can't go wrong the last thing we need to do before putting this action man back together is to fix the damaged flocking on his head. If we look at the side of his head, you can see there's a little bit of flock missing there just uh, next to his ear. And on the underside of the beard, there's also quite a large area of the flocking missing. Now, there are services online that you can send heads off to and they will re-flock them. But I thought that was a bit boring. I would try and do it myself uh, to make this video more interesting for you guys to watch. So I've been doing a lot of research and it it's not that straightforward, but I found a way that I think works pretty well. Now, you can buy flock quite easily. Now, this is called dead grass, this colour here, and it's designed for uh, modelling sort of Warhammer uh, scenes and things like that. And I bought that and it's actually a pretty good colour match. If you see there, it's fairly close to the original sort of blonde uh, flock that was used on the Action Man. So I've been trying some ways of getting this flock onto the Action Man head. And the best way I've found that does seem to work pretty well is if you get an old water bottle, like a drinks bottle, one like this, cut a hole in one end. So I've just drilled a little hole in there. 
and put the flock inside it, what you can do is shake the flock up, if I just do that for a little while, and you can build up a static charge on it. You can see on the edge of the bottle there that it's got quite a charge, and you can then squirt this out of the hole that I've drilled at the top, and it produces quite a nice flock. So I've done a little test here, and now this is a just a, a, a doorknob that I happen to have. It's not the best thing to do, and I would rather have done something plastic, but it gives you an idea of how the flocking works. So I use this process of shaking up the flock in a plastic bottle and then I put a bit of uh, just white normal PVA glue onto the surface and then squirted the flock out through the hole that I drilled in the top and you can see that it's actually stuck pretty well. I've done another test on this side where I've actually just sort of sprinkled the flock on, uh, dr shaking it up in this bottle and then dropping it out and you can see that's also produced a reasonable result. So I'm going to go and try this on this action man head and we'll see how we get on. It may work, it may look horrid, but the only way to find out is to give it a try. Now I'm doing this out in my garage because the flock does produce quite a mess uh, and I don't really want that all over my workshop. So out into the garage and we'll see how we get on. It takes about five minutes to do the flocking. You do have to be quite careful with putting the glue on. You don't want to put the glue in too many areas that you don't want the flock. So uh, go easy with that and use a brush. And here we have the uh, final result of my uh, first ever bit of flocking. And as you can see, it's quite an impressive uh, result. I'm really pleased with how this has matched up. The colour is almost identical. It may be, I would say, slightly lighter, but that could just be uh, the age of the original flock sort of being a bit dirty still. But it really is good. It's very hard to tell that I've even repaired uh, the beard on this guy. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty good result. And as you can see, I've still got quite a lot of the uh, flock left. I think this bag cost me 2 99 I bought it from a place called Tiny Worlds on eBay. Uh, so I've got an awful lot of flock left. So if I ever get any more blonde haired action man in, I can uh, certainly repair them. If not, this is going to go in my uh, spares pots for a future restorations. It's now time for me to restring this action man. I've got some elastic. Uh, this is uh, about four or five millimeter sort of round elastic and is ideal for doing the restringing. Uh, if you want to see how I've done it, then again, please check out my uh, Deep Sea Diver video. I'm not going to cover it again because it's quite a long winded process to film uh, and is much easier to do without the camera in the way. But uh, essentially you need bits of elastic and restring it in a specific way. And we'll get this guy back up and running uh, and then we can carry on and fix the other things like replacing his hands, replacing his foot, and we'll get this guy put back together. I've now restrung him. It takes about five to ten minutes to do the restring, and as you can see, he's all back and uh, looks pretty good. He's all quite poseable again now. So the next things to, to finish are uh, replacing his hands and his foot. Now, while I was washing this figure, uh, because I use quite warm water, the plastic softens quite nicely, so it's much easier to remove the feet when the plastic is slightly warm. So I pulled off this uh, Tommy Gun foot. Uh, it's very easy to do. You just sort of twist and pull, and they do come out. As you can see, they've just got a sort of slightly, um, well, it's slightly sort of angled peg that uh, goes inside. So once it's warm, it does soften quite nicely. And again, I've managed to trade uh, with a kind subscriber for an original Action Man for, as you can see, the colour matches quite nicely. Uh, so all we've got to do is to push this in place. And it should just 
if we gently push it like that it should just pop in and uh, there we go he's now got two feet which is a good start for his hands i bought some uh, reproduction hands these are the uh, 40th anniversary reproduction hands so they're a slightly different color but uh, they're the best that you can get for his left hand, obviously he is missing the whole hand, so we're just going to be able to uh, slot in the new hand. Sometimes these don't fit particularly well, um, other times they do. Actually, this is feeling like it's going to be a pretty good fit, so I've just got to push that in place. Uh, and there we have uh, that hand replaced. For his right hand, I'd rather use the original sort of wrist uh, little peg here. So I'm actually going to pull this hand out for now, as you can see, and I'm going to carefully break off if I can, this old plastic hand. As you can see, it's quite brittle. So I'm just going to break that off and we can swap the hand over. I'm actually probably going to use a pair of plastic nippers or something just to cut that away, just so that there's nothing left of it. So let me do that. So you can see that I've managed to clean up that uh, wrist peg quite nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to take the hand off this new 40th uh, reproduction wrist uh, peg. All you've got to do is sort of bend them slightly and break the glue and it should come off pretty easily. Now these are slightly different fixings on this uh, modern hand to the old hand. If I hold up the two wrist pegs you'll see that the modern wrist peg is slightly shorter and it's actually got a flat end to it right, compared to the slightly rounded end of the original one. So what we're going to need to do is just, again, I'm just going to use some plastic nippers to gently nip the end of that off and make it a bit flatter like so. Then we can just drop a little bit of super glue onto this and uh, glue the hand in place and then should fit pretty nicely. Uh, but we've still got an original uh, wrist uh, peg there rather than the reproduction one. So I'm just going to uh, put a bit of glue on that and we'll get it stuck in place. The last thing I want to do before we put the clothes back on this action man is to repair his uh, eyebrows. As you can see, they've worn off slightly. The rest of the paint is actually not too bad. His face is still a little bit dirty, but uh, I can't actually get that. It seems to get that out of the plastic. So really, we're just going to fix his eyebrows. So I've got some humble acrylic paints here. I've got number 33 and the RC402, which is sort of brown. And I'm going to mix those together to make a slightly darker brown than uh, I have in my sort of collection at the moment because his eyebrows they're not black but they're not they're not a very light brown so just a mixture of these two uh, should should be a reasonable result so once I've got a sort of darkish colour that should do quite nicely and then it's just a case of very carefully painting his eyebrows on And there we go, I think that looks uh, a lot better. And here we have the final figure. So in answer to the question, what happened to the drunken sailor? The answer now is Toy Poloi fixed him. As you can see, he's looking pretty good. It's not a complete set of uh, the uniform. It's a sort of mishmash between the sailor and the Navy attack outfit. Uh, in the future, I'd like to find a few of the other bits that I'm missing. He should have a couple of flags and he has a different helmet. But uh, for the purposes of this restoration, I actually quite like him sort of set up like this. He's sort of halfway between the two and he does look really nice. The, uh, all the details of, that I've fixed seem to have worked really well. I'm particularly pleased with how the uh, flocking has gone on on the beard. That actually does look very nice. And the colour match, now that everything has dried, is really pretty close. You'd be hard pushed to tell that that had been fixed. And also fixed in such a sort of uh, amateur way using a uh, squeezy bottle uh, and some flock that's supposed to be grass. So I'm really pleased with that result. Uh, the outfit, as I've said, uh, is not uh, restored. In the end, I did actually replace all the bits just because it was easier uh, and the, the bits of uh, clothing that I was given at the start really weren't in good enough condition. The uh, sailor top, although I've re-sewed it, uh, the one I found for £2 is a much better uh, fit. He's still got a little bit of dirt on his face. That I've not been able to get off. Sometimes the grime and, and ink is so ingrained in it just won't come out. But he looks an awful lot better than he did when he arrived here at Toy Poloi. 
So if you've enjoyed this video and would like to help out Toyploy in future videos, then please check out my Patreon page. Links to this will be in the description for this video. I have to say this has been a pretty fun restoration. I do like receiving figures that are really quite beaten up because most people just think it's the sort of thing that goes straight in the bin. But as you can see, with a little bit of time and effort and some careful repairing, you can actually get a figure to look pretty nice again. Now, this is what I would class as one of my sort of wabby sabby uh, type figures. It's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect. But I like the fact it's got things wrong with it and it shows some age and it shows that it's been played with and had a really good life. This is perfect to go on display here at Toy Ploy and it's been a really great restoration for me to do. So I hope that's been of interest to you all and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloy on Twitter and Facebook.